What's up y'all and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So in today's video, I wanna talk about the five things you need to know before investing into sneakers. So I had a lot of people that were asking how to get into sneaker investing or in general, how to buy these sneakers. So I figured I'd make a series about all the things I know about the art of reselling sneakers and put it into a playlist where it's easily accessible for everyone. If you guys haven't seen my video about the secret asset class, I recommend you guys watch that first. It gives good insight on why you guys should invest into sneakers in the first place. So with that, let's get right into it. So the first thing that you guys should know before getting into sneakers and investing to them is sneakers are an investment. So my problem was when I first started investing into sneakers, I would get, I like to call it, get high off your own supply. So a lot of times I'd find good deals on shoes or I'd buy them at retail. Um, and that would end up hurting me because I'd fall in love with the shoe and I'd end up wearing these shoes and that would hurt the value of the shoe. So if you guys think about it, sneakers are one of the few commodities or investments that you can actually depreciate over time or they can appreciate over time depending on how you use them. So if you think about a house, for example, you can buy a house, you can invest to a house, but if you live in the house, the price can still appreciate, right? But with sneakers on the other side, if you wear the sneakers, you're going to depreciate over time. So it really depends how you keep and how you uh, value these shoes. So you can see that it says condition dead stock. Dead stock just means that it's you know kept in good condition, immaculate condition. The box is there. You have everything with it and there's nothing wrong with the shoe, right? But if it was used, the price wouldn't be exactly the same because they depreciate over time. So it's kind of good to know that sneakers are an investment and you want to keep them on ice. You want to keep them in the backlog of your house or in your garage or in your closet and just let it appreciate over time. So that was my problem, you know, falling in love with these shoes, wearing them out, showing off my style. So it's kind of weird to say that, but it's best if you want it, like the profit margin is going to be a lot bigger if you just invest into the shoes and let them grow. You can still make money while wearing the shoes and then selling them later on. Um, this doesn't work for every single shoe, but I'll get into that a little bit later. The second thing that you should know before investing into sneakers is about sneakers liquidity and about their taxes. So let's just get right into that. So what is liquidity? Liquidity is how fast you can sell your assets and convert it into cash. So liquidity can be very important if you're facing some type of financial emergency or something comes up and you need money right away. So it's important to have liquid assets. So selling sneakers is a process. So let's just break down that process. So first, let's just say you bought it right away. It's going to take some time for the shipper to ship it to you. And let's just say for this example, you already have a sneaker, you know, then you have to check for its quality. Then then you can send it to StockX or go to be verified. That whole verification process and that shipment process can take up to four to five days. And then after that whole verification process, you can finally get your money. So that can take, you know, about a week or two weeks, which, you know, it takes time. If you compare it to stocks, for example, you can sell that stock that day and you can get your money back that day. So it's a lot less liquid than stocks are, but nonetheless, it's a great source of income. And on top of it not being very liquid, it can cut into your profit margin as well. For example, you can see that the last person sold it for $571 and the lowest asset $574. But let's just say you're facing some type of financial emergency and you need to sell it and you need money right now. So the highest somebody's willing to buy it for right now is $461. So if you click that, you can see that it's going to be $461 and then it's going to be transaction fee and a payment process fee. So it's going to go all the way down to $405. So essentially what you're doing is you're losing out on that profit margin that you could have with that $570. But you know, if you evaluate the shoe, it's going to be a lot closer to $570 than it is to $461. So if you're into liquid assets or you're just like having money quickly or fast, that's one of the downsides into investing into sneakers. While the profit margin can be huge, you know, getting that money can take a little bit of time. But if you have a safety measure, or you have like a cushion that you're okay with that one to two weeks isn't bad for getting your money, then sneaker investing can be the way. Okay, so let's get into taxes. So the first type of tax that we're going to have to pay is called a sales tax. So that really just depends on where you're from and where you live. It can vary from state to state or even by city by city. So for example, I'm from Massachusetts, so we have to pay a sales tax of 6.25%, but that's only in effect if the shoe is worth more than $175. So that's not that bad, but it really depends on where you live. Like I said, a lot of places are going to be above 10%. A lot of places are going to be below 10%. 
The reason why it matters is because if you're selling a shoe that's going to net you maybe 10 to $20 a profit, if you have a higher tax rate, then you're going to have, be paying less, you're going to be making less of a profit margin. So if you're selling a lot of shoes around that 10 to $20 range, you're not going to be making as much money as if, you know, you didn't have a tax at all, you know? And at the same time, if you're selling a shoe that's worth maybe $500 to $600 profit, then that tax rate doesn't really matter. It's mostly only in effect if you're selling a shoe that's maybe 10 to $20 profit. Just a quick tip, if you buy or sell locally, you can avoid all the confusion on taxes, but you know, I'm gonna save that for later in the video. So let's get into the next tax, seller or income tax. So you can see that US sellers will get a 1099 if they have 200 transactions or more with at least $20,000 from sales on StockX. I'm pretty sure it's going to be split between GOAT and StockX and any other sellers that you're using. But I will, for the sense of transparency, I'll let you guys know that I did get hit with a 1099, even though I was nowhere near $20,000, like not even like a 10th of the way. But I did get hit with one. I had to pay taxes, but it wasn't like anything crazy. Honestly, it was basically nothing. Now, the next thing that you need to know is unlike stocks or other investments, with sneakers, you actually run the risk of buying fake pairs. And that's just been one of the major issues with sneaker selling for a while now. And it kind of sucks. But there are platforms like Gold or StockX or even smaller consignment shops that have a verification process to assure that the sneakers you buy are legit. So you can see Kicks Guru right here has this whole real or fake image and they kind of just go through all the different things like the box, they kind of compare and contrast, the laces, stitching, and all these different things just to kind of see if the pairs are legit or not, which is just great. And you can kind of do this yourself too. You can Google that image of the shoe of a fake one and a legit one and kind of do the eye test. The problem comes when you try to buy sneakers from a person that you don't know or if you try to buy from third party apps like eBay or OfferUp. I do think eBay is working on some kind of verification process, but currently they don't have one. So there are going to be people out there that try to finesse you and take advantage of you. And I've had this happen to me, especially when I didn't really know anything about sneakers in the first place. I've definitely came really close to buying fake sneakers like a bunch of times. It's pretty easy to tell for the most part. Like a lot of times they don't have proof of purchase so like no receipt or they don't have any you know, verification card or anything like that, or if they're just being sketchy in general, it's just best to avoid them in the first place. So that's why personally I prefer selling on GOAT or buying on GOAT just because the whole process is a lot more easier and there aren't really risks. So the fees are always gonna be there, but you know, I'd rather pay that premium just because one, it's safe, and two, it's just so much easier. And then I just wanna clarify, there's also nothing wrong with buying fake pairs for yourself. You're gonna be able to save tons of money and you're still gonna get that same fashion look, that cool sneaker. The problem is if you try to sell these fake pairs and advertise them as real, there's something wrong with that. So for those of you that are new to sneakers or don't really understand why hype sneakers is a thing, I totally get it. And let me try to break it down to you. So you're probably wondering like, you know, why are some of these sneakers going for hundreds or even thousands of dollars? And like I said, I totally get it. I, honestly, I was pretty shook when I first got into sneaker investing too. You know, I'm looking at this off-white right here and it's going for like $420, probably a little bit more than that. But in all honesty, it's probably one of the most ugly shoes and, you know, to each their own. In my opinion, I think it's pretty ugly and I'm just looking at it and it's like, why is it $420? Well, there's no set reason to why, but if I had to guess, it all goes back to the basic economic principle of supply and demand. So as you guys know, supply and demand, it has a relationship with the price of a product and just based off the demand and the supply. Well, the thing with sneaker investing is there's one more factor involved and that factor is hype. And that's one of the weirdest and most mysterious proponents when it comes to sneaker investing. And it's also one of the things that you need to know before getting into sneakers and that's hype drives the market for sneakers. So you're gonna get a lot of these celebrities or influencers or whatever you wanna call them and they help, their job is to help drive the hype for these sneakers. For example, you've got Kanye West, he's rocking his own shoes right here. These are called the Yeezys, for those of you that don't know. And they can go for a lot of money. And although Yeezys are kind of losing value, they can still make you a decent profit. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Kanye is pushing out a lot of new colorways for his Yeezys and a lot of new models. And it's kind of killing the hype, which lowers the value of the sneakers. So if you guys don't know, like a while back, these Yeezys were super popular. They were super hype and they were going for a lot more. But now because he's kind of, his hype is kind of dying out, they still go for a good amount of money, but not as much as they used to. And then now you've got newer guys like Travis Scott, who's got some of his sneakers reselling for over $1,000. And the reason for that is because he's a lot more hype than Kanye West currently. So in a way, sneakers are, are very associated with these trends and hype. And the last thing that you need to know is the performance of these shoes and how it depends on the model of the shoe. Each sneaker is gonna perform differently. A Jordan 1 will perform differently from Yeezy. So it's important to know which shoes are gonna be profitable in the short term versus the long term and just anything about these models in general. 
for the most part, I'd recommend going for almost any Jordan 1, so this model right here, or any Nike SBs. I'll totally make a video in the future on which sneakers to buy to resell and how to buy them. But like I said, this is going to be a series where we learn more about investing into sneakers incrementally. So make sure you guys subscribe or save this video for when I make more for this series. But for now, I'd recommend these two models and just to follow a few pages on Instagram to see the most profitable shoes and to go for them on the sneakers app. So with that, let's just break down the performance of this Jordan 1 model. Uh, so you can see that when it first, before it released, it was going for around 379. So think of that as like people that got early access to the shoe. So they have the price, so they're selling it quite early. And then as soon as everyone gets their pairs, what happens is the price drops. So I like to think of it as similar to an IPO for when, you know, new stocks will IPO. So if you're not into stocks, just don't worry about that. But yeah, so the price drops quite a bit and this is a good time to buy in. But for the most part, I would just go for retail because it's the most safest bet. You're going to make money off of retail regardless. There's no need to always go for, you know, buying the shoe right away off of resale because it could take a long time. So you can see this was back in 2019 in November. So in one year, this shoe incrementally grew. You know, it takes time. So after a year, the shoe is worth almost $415. So that's just the performance of this one specific shoe. And most Jordan 1 models will perform like that. And it's just good to know that before you get into sneaker investing. So with that, that's all I've got for you guys for today for the top five things you need to know before getting into sneaker investing. And let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. I'll totally make more to this series. I had a lot of fun making it. Let me know if you guys want to see more stock videos or more sneaker investing videos. I'm still experimenting with my channel, so I'm pretty much open to anything. So just let me know. So yeah, with that, I appreciate y'all for listening and make sure you guys email me or leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll totally reply. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found any value that would be much appreciated. And by the way, episode two to my basketball podcast is out. So the link for that channel will be in the description. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. So you can check us out there. So with that, y'all take care. And remember, everybody eats.